What is up, YouTube? This is Frank the Tank back here. And today we are restarting our Pittsburgh Pirates franchise. I know a lot of you loved the Pirates franchise the last time we were doing it. Unfortunately, I do not have that exact uh, team and franchise still going. But we did start a new one, and I think this is going to be fun because um, I went through the roster vaults. I downloaded tons of different rosters, trying to find one with all the updated trades and like the current state of the MLB rosters. And I was able to find a pretty good one that built off of the Operation Sports Forum uh, rosters that has all the updated free agent signings and trades to this point. So if you go look over here before I show you the squad, in the free agents, you know, you still have Cespedes, still have Chris Davis, still have Ian Desmond, uh, Upton Holland, Cliff Lee, Gallardo, Gordon, um, Iwakuma, even though he did sign with the Mariners this morning after he failed his physical for the Dodgers. I don't understand that. Like, he had a, like a three-year, $45 million deal with the Dodgers, failed the physical, but then this morning he was able to sign with the Mariners. So I don't know if the Dodgers have, like, a different set of you know circumstances for their physicals I don't understand how that works but you know we see there's a ton of free agents here so we are going to jump over to the Pirates team uh, one edit I had to make to the roster was I traded uh, Jason Rogers from the Brewers to the Pirates uh, for Keon Buxton and Trey Supak uh, the trade that happened last night giving the Pirates some more depth at first base so we are going to go over to the roster. Our starting pitchers, we have Garrett Cole, who is a 91 overall, definitely the ace of our staff. Francisco Liriano, left-handed veteran, 89 overall. We signed Scott Casimir. Now, the reason I wanted to sign Scott Casimir was because this is a move that the Pirates can realistically make. They have the money to do it. Um, and, you know, to be quite honest, it's a move that they need to make in real life. Um, I want to try to keep this as legit as possible with this franchise. Um, we signed him for about three years, thirty million. You're always making nine point seven a year, so right around three years, thirty million. Definitely a realistic contract. In real life, he probably will get around eleven to thirteen million per year, depending on where he signs and who he signs with. Uh, but I think that was a really good contract for us, and you know, it's something that could necessarily happen. So I could have went and got Yoena Cespedes for like 9.7 million a year on here when I was just messing around and looking at contracts and what they were asking for. Uh, he wanted like eight or nine million a year for like seven years and we could have done that but we didn't because we want to stay realistic and you know realistically when he does sign he's going to get upwards of 20 million per season. So we do get Scott Casimir left handed uh, starting pitcher at 85 overall. We have John Neese here, lefty starter, 82 overall. We got him uh, from the trade with the Mets for Neil Walker, a trade that I absolutely hate in real life. I do not know why the Pirates, I mean, I know why the Pirates did it. Um, apparently, their asking price for Neil Walker was insane all through like the beginning of this offseason when they were really shopping him. And, you know, they went into the winter meetings, dest like, absolutely wanting to trade him like they did not want him on the team next year which I don't understand you know Neil Walker two years ago was a top three second baseman in all of baseball and then last year Clint Hurdle who I despise as a manager you know did not play him he just simply decided not to play him um against left-handed pitchers even though he's a switch hitter and he's not terrible from the right side of the plate uh but you know neil walker could have put up really good numbers if he played every day uh really sad to see him go there was a report released um by fox sports saying that you know they tried to extend walker two years ago and the pirates basically said here's the only contract we're going to offer you and every time his agent um Dis or tried to make a counter offer, the Pirates just ignored it and would not negotiate. So um, that speaks volumes about the state of the Pirates organization. Um, I'm not a fan of the coach at all, and I'm a diehard Pirates fan, if you guys don't remember that. Um, I don't like Clint Hurdle whatsoever. I don't think he's a good manager. He makes terrible decisions. Um, he's, he's a really good players coach and a really good motivator, uh, but his in-game managing is horrendous. Um, I'm not a big fan of Neil Huntington. He's, he's, you know, a genius at building an organization from nothing. 
to like getting the minor league system good and getting us a bunch of good prospects um, but he's so afraid to pull the trigger on any type of move and you know every year is always you know this guy's gonna be ready next year this guy's gonna be good for next year and they never get anything done you know they're always a couple pieces short they always try to sign you know they'll sign five cheap you know bargain players for ten million dollars total before they give that ten million dollars to one you know good player that can potentially impact the team uh, so that's something I hate about the organization our owner Bob Nutting you know he has money he owns two ski resorts near Pittsburgh um, you know Seven Springs and Hidden Valley he bought one of them for like a hundred and some million dollars a couple years ago uh, but he won't spend money on the team you know which is pathetic uh, but you know what are you gonna do we're gonna do our best this year I'm always gonna root them on um, but yeah it's a shame that we had to give up Neil Walker for a guy like John Neese um, anyway we do have uh, Tyler Glass now here and Jamison Tyon. Since they're our top prospects, I want to start them in AAA, but it will not be long before you see Glass now, definitely. Maybe a month or two into the season, uh, depending on how he's throwing. Now, we did make one trade. We traded Jeff Locke. Um, I did the thing on the trade screen where I click on him because I hate Jeff Locke. He's a terrible pitcher. Um, I don't want him on the team this year in real life, and I definitely didn't want him on my franchise team. Uh, so we put the thing up where we get offers for him and Boston offered their starting pitcher Matt Barnes who was one of their top prospect pitchers um, he did get some time in the big leagues for them last year and he's 24 years old a B potential 67 overall so since he does have some MLB service time even though he's rated five less overall than Tyler Glass now um, I wanted to put him in our rotation so we're gonna start the year with him you know decent pitcher there so that's a pretty good rotation we're gonna go over to our relief pitchers of course Tony Watson returning a fantastic left-handed setup man Jared Hughes who's you know consistently um, productive for the Pirates Archimedes Caminero who throws about a hundred miles an hour consistently um, we have Jorge Rondon in the bullpen and also Juan Nicasio who was I think our most expensive free agent signing in real life so far this offseason coming at about three million dollars which is absolutely pathetic um, that Juan Acasio is the star of our offseason uh, but whatever next Mark Melanson here to 91 overall uh, what really gets me angry too is the Pirates are shopping him you know they're not going to trade him for peanuts which I guess is good but they also said that if they get an offer that you know gets them a lot of or some young talent uh, that they're going to ship him off and pretty much because his arbitration is going to be about 10 million dollars and our payroll is only expected to be about 105 you know they don't want to pay their closer you know 10 percent of the whole team's payroll uh, which is stupid because he was one of the best you know statistically he was the best closer in baseball last year he led in saves um, there's this other stat like it was kind of like a war stat for pitchers, and he was on the top of that too. Um, you know, but he was essential to the team's success last year. You know, winning 98 games in real life. Um, so we're definitely keeping him on this team. If the Pirates trade him in real life, um, I don't even know if I'll start watching games this year. But anyway, we go on to our catchers, Francisco Cervelli, who was great last year. He had over 300. Um, Chris Stewart, fantastic backup. And we do have some guys waiting in the wings. Um, Elias Diaz, Tony Sanchez, and Reese McGuire. Um, we're definitely going to get Diaz up at some point. Uh, maybe with September call-ups when we expand the rosters. First baseman, I went and I signed Chris Carter to a free agent deal. Once again, one of the moves that the Pirates could potentially make in real life uh, that would make a lot of sense for the team because we do need another first baseman. Even though we got Jason Rogers here, really good numbers, um, contact and power against right-handed pitchers, which is very good for us. Um, because even though he's a right-handed bat, he has those good numbers against righties. And Chris Carter's numbers against righties are terrible. Only 36 contract. He does have the 8 or contact. He does have the 81 power. Uh, but we're going to platoon the two, which is strange to platoon two right-handed hitters. Uh, but I think it makes a lot of sense with Jason Rogers' numbers against right-handed pitchers. Um, you know, of course, Josh Bell waiting in the wings. And you see A.J. Reed here. I'll explain that in a second. Um... But we did sign Chris Carter. We gave him five years, 3.7 million, uh, which is about 740k per year. I think that's a steal. Um, 
since we're looking for some realistic pickups. Another move, we traded Michael Morse. Uh, you know, in real life, he might be the Pirates starting first baseman this year, which is absolutely pathetic uh, because he was terrible last year. But we traded him to the Padres for second baseman Benji Gonzalez. I think he's only like a D potential. Yeah, we go or C potential, so that's not too bad. He's going to be in AAA for us. Uh, the reason we made that trade is because we got rid of Morse's $8 million a year salary. So we did clear about $8 million in cap by making that move. And you see here, we have A.J. Reed, one of the top prospects in the Astros system. Um, I was clearing out some guys, so I just do the thing where I go to the trade screen. You click on three players, you hit square, and other teams will make you offers. So we traded our, one of our backup catchers, Wilkin Castillo, who would never see the field for us. Uh, relief pitcher Brad Lincoln, who we haven't had for a while. And starting pitcher Brandon Compton, who is going to be out again this year after having Tommy John surgery about midway through the year last year. Uh, I just wanted to get him off the books. He had about a 500k contract that I just didn't want to deal with. Uh, so we traded that to Houston. We got first baseman A.J. Reed, who's a B potential, one of their you know better prospects. Um, starting pitcher Thomas Shipley, who was half decent, and center fielder Andrew Applin, who's an okay uh, younger center fielder. Uh, so that's really nice for us, a great move all around. Uh, so we're able to get rid of those guys, get a couple bucks back, and get th you know three players that we could potentially build up through the system. Um, because next year, you know, we have some question marks, you know, as far as. Uh, Francisco Liriano in the offseason, depending what season, kind of season he has this year, uh, what kind of potential production he has. Obviously, his overall is going to go down. Uh, but so, you know, we'll stay back here. Uh, I moved Josh Harrison. They had his position in third here. I think he's going to play a ton of second this year for the Pirates. So he's going to be our starting second baseman, 81 overall. We have him at a decent contract. You know, we have him locked up over the next, you know, five years, six years for about, you know, six to eight mil per. Very nice. Alan Henson is going to start the year in the bigs for us just because we do need that depth in the infield. Uh, you know, 67 overall, one of our top prospects. Third baseman, Jung Ho Gong. Jung Ho Gong is going to be our starting third baseman. He might miss the first month of the season in real life, but, you know, he's healthy on the game. Fantastic rookie season last year. I'm pretty sure he went by, you know, all the expectations. And when he did get playing time, you know, with Jordy Mercer's injury, you know, he was really able to take advantage of it. Uh, so that's great. Uh, Pirates re-signed Sean Rodriguez the other day. Why, I don't know. Uh, they're going up for one year, two and a half million. Um, I hate Sean Rodriguez in real life. He's a terrible player. He hit like 246 last year. Um, Clint Hurdle adores him for some reason. I don't understand why. But his numbers are terrible. 37 and 31 contact. 40 and 37 power. He is a utility guy. He can't play everywhere. I understand that. Uh, but this guy has absolutely no impact in a baseball game whatsoever. So we have him for one year, two and a half million. I might trade him before the season starts just because I never want to use him and I don't even want to see him on the roster. So I'm going to make a note here to trade him. I don't even care what we get in exchange. Uh, so shortstop, Jordy Merce is going to start for us. Um, you know, he's pretty decent shortstop. Can't complain about him. Uh, we have a lot of sh uh, shortstop depth here. So maybe I'll do something. Uh, maybe try to trade a couple of them and get some depth at other positions. Pedro Florimon, you know, another utility player. Decent bunner. Um half decent speed just a guy that we have for depth probably is never going to see the field left field starling Marte, one of our top um top guys on our team you know that 97 contact against lefties 89 speed he's going to get on base he's going to steal bases uh fantastic throwing arm in left field and he does have some solid power center fielder andrew mccutcheon of course the cornerstone of our franchise numbers as you can see up there, crazy good. 96 overall, uh, kind of contract. He has it, you know, look at those, you know, the numbers on those years. You know, 7.9 mil for this year, 8.3 for the next, 8.7, 9.1. You know, you can't beat that contract. Um, Austin Meadows, definitely a one of our top prospects. He is a center fielder. Uh, we have him in AAA. Is it a 66 overall? Um, I think it's going to be a little while before we bring him up just to try to keep this as realistic as possible. Uh, but again, this is a video game. So if he's tearing it up in the minor leagues, you know, we're going to bring him up. I know you guys want to see the younger guys get in. Uh, so right field, Gregory Polanco going to start for us. You know, contact numbers. Numbers aren't great, but he's still very young. A potential 23. Uh, so we're going to try to have a really good year with him. Um, I made another signing. I signed Grady Sizemore in free agents. 
just a guy because we literally had no um, backup outfielders on the team. So I wanted to get him up here. Uh, we got him for two years, 3.8 million. You know, not too bad as you can see here. That's only 1.9 a year. Uh, veteran presence, you know, great fielding. You know, 70 speed is pretty decent. Um, and he could definitely, you know, 61 contact and 52 power against righties. Uh, that's pretty solid coming off the bench. So there you have it, guys. There is our Pittsburgh Pirates franchise. There's the roster. Um, and I will be at you guys soon with that first gameplay. So thanks again for watching. Uh, like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. 